Hi everyone, good morning. Today is going to be a bittersweet episode for me and I'm sure it will be for most of you. Um, we are near the town of Saltillo and we are in one of the most diverse and smallest little localities I have seen so far in Mexico. Even climbing all the way up to the mountains, we haven't seen the diversity that we've seen here. Uh, we're going to see some amazing Tilocactus rinconensis plants right next to some Lophophora williamsi and, and I mean inches away and that's something that we've gone all over the place and this is one of the few places where we've seen such diversity in such close quarters. This has to be around maybe a couple hundred square feet and you're gonna see opuntioids, you're gonna see uh, like I said Telocactus, Lophophora and many other plants living in this very very small space and this area is being very, very thoroughly developed. We're gonna show you just how close the buildings are getting to these plants. And it's not just the buildings, more, more of a problem than the buildings is the trash. So these construction sites dump their trash right next to where they're building, which is pretty idiotic. I don't understand why the Mexican government would allow something like this to happen. It's, it's pretty obvious where the trash is coming from. Uh, it's all construction trash and the big problem with the construction trash is that it's very heavy and it's very dense and n right next to the beautiful plants that we're going to show you these mountains of trash are obviously covering a lot of the plants that you can't see anymore and I'm sure some of them are trying to survive under all that rubble most of them are probably dead by now uh, but I think the importance of showing you this site in particular is that these plants are facing so many challenges besides poaching that we have to manage what we can control and one of the aspects of the challenges that we can control is the poaching of their habitat. So since their habitat is being reduced by human development and the growth of the cities around where they live, we can only control what we do up in the mountains where they should be sort of sacred places for these plants to live and thrive. We cannot control human development. There's going to be more monkeys floating around this, this rock as time goes by. There's no stopping it. But we can definitely control what we do when we go see them in what has become their home because we have pushed them out of our developed areas and into the mountains. And we should at least respect those spaces and make sure that people who love cacti and succulents don't feed the habitat trade. And I'm sure that if we put our collection dollars and all our money and we invest in our collections into purely cultivated plants, people aren't going to feel the need to go up to the mountain and rip these things off the ground to sell them. So this is going to be a sad episode. I wish I didn't have the opportunity to make it and I wish um, this wasn't a problem but I, I want you to see the reality because it's, it's, it's very saddening especially to me because I've seen them all over the place and this diversity is unique. I hadn't seen so many species in such a small space and unfortunately they're most likely going to be gone in the next six months maybe a year. We are going to try to talk to some people in the Museo del Desierto, which is where we're going on the next episode, to see if there's anything we can do. I don't mind coming here with a shovel and ripping all these plants out of the ground. I, I don't care if some of the plant police says that I'm a poacher. I'm not going to rip them out of the ground to sell them or to profit from these plants in any way. But I want them to be rescued because you're going to see just how amazing this population is and it deserves to be rescued and they need to go to a place where people can appreciate them and hopefully fall in love with them, especially the locals, because most of the poaching, unfortunately, is not being done by tourists. It's not being done by the Europeans or the Asians or the people in the US. They're being done by locals who are usually poverty stricken. They have, they have problems and, you know, there's no way to convince them to jump on cultivation. But we can convince you guys and, and it's up to us uh, to change this because it's a problem that we can do something about. So hopefully by seeing this, it'll make you really sad and really pissed off and that'll make us change and, and sort of see these plants in a different light because these plants need to be at least documented before they're all gone.
Helocactus rinconensis was definitely the prominent species here, but it was very well accompanied by Lophophora williamsi, other Thylocactus bicolor, and even Opuntia microdasis, a plant that's well known for looking very nice and friendly until you touch it. The skin of this Stylocactus rinconensis pimatotelos was completely purple due to the extreme levels of stress it was experiencing from being uprooted, probably for quite a long time. So we dug a little hole and anchored it with some rocks around it to hopefully save it from drying out. I would have liked to dig it a little deeper, but unfortunately we had no tools and the dirt was very very tough to get through. Lophophora williamsii has been a plant of great interest for mankind for about 5,000 years. Indigenous cultures in what is now northern Mexico began using the plant in their religious practices and ceremonies due to the potent alkaloid that it contains known as mescaline which has psychoactive effects. Long descendants of these cultures are still using the plant today, but unfortunately there are also many others using these cultures as an excuse or a shield to try to justify the systematic poaching and commercialization of these plants, which we already know is detrimental to their ecosystems. Looks like we got here just a little bit too early. They're not quite ready to open up their blooms and I want you to see them in their full glory so I can make you extra sad and more likely to never collect another habitat plant again. So we're gonna come back whenever they feel like opening their blooms. We have all day, you know, with cacti, there's no rushing, there's no um, hurry. You have to sort of wait until they do what they wanna do. 
So we're gonna come back when these beauties open up their blooms because we want to show them in their full glory and document them uh, because maybe one day they're gonna be gone. So we'll be back. guys we're back in the same location and it was definitely worth it these things are gorgeous i had never seen a habitat well actually i had seen mammillaria blooming in habitat but i'm i'm not the biggest mammillaria fan I, I i love them now that i've been to mexico and i've seen them in habitat but this is one of the plants that i really came to see and it was definitely worth coming back the sun is blazing right now it's about midday about 85 degrees fahrenheit and they're all doing their thing. Midday is when they open up for pollinators. It makes sense that they hold that, they sort of close up the blooms and save their energy for a time when there's gonna be pollinators around. And we've already seen a bunch of insects. I guess those guys wake up late too. So they're in full bloom right now. I hope you enjoy seeing these things and it was definitely worth coming back here at this time. So we're just gonna show you the, the most beautiful things that we can find. Um, we crossed over the road and found another population so we're going to show you some of those plants as well and i hope you enjoy this i hope um, these guys stay around forever but if they don't we at least were able to document them and get them on camera for you um, so let's go check out some blooming plants now All of the plants we found were in really good health. Most of the mother plants were either blooming or producing fruit and had many seedlings growing around them. Can you imagine this entire area being somebody's living room in the next six months? We found this stilocactus with a seed pod that you can see here and this is what happens when a pollinator or an insect deposits pollen from another individual into the flower of this individual and they sort of do their magic and they produce seed. So we're going to deposit the seed in an area where they have a little bit of shade so that hopefully if they germinate the seedlings can have a chance to survive. That's all for today. I hope I didn't make you too sad about the situation. If you ever want to buy plants from cultivation, t-shirts, or any other thing related to this beautiful hobby, check out our website eastcoastcamanchaca.com and remember, take nothing but pictures from Habitat. See you on the next episode.